In this video, I'm going to talk about how you can create highly effective and professional videos on a budget. Now the first and most important aspect of video marketing is being able to create high quality professional looking videos. If you can't do this, then you won't be able to engage your audience and you won't be able to show yourself as a business that they can trust to provide great quality work. Remember, the aim here is to show that your organization is highly capable and has great attention to detail. The presumption will be that the quality of your video is indicative of the quality of your service or products. So you need to ensure that your viewers are blown away by your production values. Now, of course, the only problem here is that most of us aren't Steven Spielberg, and if you have a small business or run a blog, you might not have the resources or the skills to create videos that can compete with larger organizations. Well, don't worry. With the right strategy, it's possible for anyone to create a video that evokes quality and has the desired effect. We're going to look at some strategies that you can use to instantly increase the production values of your videos and impress your audience. Now, bear in mind, not all of these tips are going to be relevant in every case. Different types of marketing video have different requirements, which we'll come to later. Now, if you're filming the video yourself and you need it to contain footage rather than static images, you need to make sure that it uses high quality footage. Now, this means that you need to think about the resolution, the frame rate, and the sound quality. And the first step to achieving this is to film at a high resolution with a camera that produces crisp, well-lit images. And this will generally come down to the quality of your video camera and of course you're likely to be limited by your budget in this regard. That said, there are some surprisingly high quality cameras that you can get for a relatively small initial investment. The GoPro, for instance, records in 1080 pixels, at least, and offers a wide-angle lens for capturing a lot at once. Likewise, many smartphones these days actually offer incredibly high-res cameras. A great example of this is the Galaxy Note 4, which actually is capable of recording in 4K resolution. If you don't have a high-end phone and you're not able to shell out for a GoPro, then remember you can always ask others to use their devices. Most people should have at least one friend who has a camera that can record in 1080 pixels. Just ask if you can use it for a while. Over time, as you start to see return on your video marketing, you'll be able to invest in more and more expensive equipment to increase the quality of your footage. Note that if you want to do things like blur out the background, you know, use macros, then you may need a more high-tech camera. In terms of sound, the ideal situation is to have a separate microphone that you can attach to your collar or elsewhere to capture the sound clearly. If you don't have this option, then make sure that you're not too far away from the camera and that the acoustics are good in the room that you're filming in. A high ceiling in an empty room can create echoes, while a busy road outside will drown you out and can make your videos feel less professional. Video quality isn't just about the camera though. Just as important is making sure you set the scene, and the lighting will play a big part here. Essentially, you need to ensure that the room is well lit so that your viewers can make you out well. This will also impact on the professionalism of the final product. If you're willing to invest a bit more money into your video marketing, then you can always get hold of some professional lighting equipment. If not, then a desk lamp with an adjustable angle can actually do a surprisingly good job. Failing that, positioning yourself correctly by a window is fine. To create the most professional look, you should aim to use Rembrandt lighting, which means that half your face will be light from a 90 degree angle. This is a little more dramatic and creates depths and contrast in your footage. You also need to avoid filming with any light sources directly behind the camera because this can create glare and even damage the lens. Next, consider the surroundings and what else is in the shot with you. As we mentioned earlier, a video shot in your bedroom is hardly going to inspire confidence in your brand, so you need to make certain that you have the sort of surrounding one might expect to see a professional video filmed in. Now the easiest way to do this is with a completely white backdrop. 
A white wall doesn't quite do the trick here as it'll have shadows and won't be completely white. Instead, what you're trying to do is create the effect of an infinite white, which should look like you're standing in the middle of a void, like in that scene in The Matrix. Now, it is possible to get a professional white backdrop, but in the interest of keeping your budget low, you can actually use a bed sheet, you know, pull it taut with some tape or with some clothes pegs, or you can use a large white sheet of paper. Now, as long as the light is bright enough and you decrease the shadows and contrast in post-production, this can look surprisingly effective. And of course, do remember to iron the sheet. Now, the great thing about filming on infinite white backdrops is that they also give you the most options in your editing, as you'll be able to move the subject around, introduce new elements, and so on. Alternatively, you can choose somewhere neutral for your filming. Now this could be out in the park somewhere, or it could be walking through town. And these sorts of settings, again, remove the DIY element by taking you into a setting where people aren't going to see your dirty laundry in the background. Finally, you can create your own backdrop using other materials. Now this might mean organizing some books in the background that are about your industry, or it might mean printing out a large poster with your logo on it. Now, if you're fortunate enough to have a professional looking store or office, then it is acceptable to film from that environment. But make sure you tidy up and choose a spot with the best lighting and the most interesting, without being distracting, background. Try to avoid using software that cuts you out of the image and creates a fake background though. This tends not to look particularly professional, especially if your arm starts disappearing. Unfortunately, the vast majority of us are not natural born presenters. And when you put yourself in front of the camera, you'll quickly see just how hard the job of a television presenter really is. Not only do you need to look the part, but you also need to deliver your lines confidently and professionally in a way that's engaging and without stuttering. If you're making lots of takes and you find yourself stumbling over your lines, then a few things can help. The first thing is to write yourself a script first that you can read. Reading your lines will help you to speak much more fluently and with fewer errors. But just make sure that it doesn't sound like you're reading. You need to engage with the audience by sounding natural and enthusiastic, as though you were talking to your friend about an amazing new deal that you just learned about. Another way to avoid stuttering is to film in multiple takes. You know, rather than trying to deliver an entire five sides of A4 in one perfect take, break it down into small chunks, changing the camera every time, and then edit them all together. Actually, pros record several takes of each piece and use the best one in the final production. If you watch back any professional video on YouTube, you'll see this constant stopping and starting actually aids the overall professional feel. This can be used to create better emphasis and to add comic timing and more. Another professional looking technique is to film your script using two or more cameras running at once and set up from different angles. This way you can cut to a different shot during the edit and create the illusion of a continuous flow of dialogue. You know, rather than having that awkward cut where your position changes only just slightly. Changing the angle like this also creates more movement in your videos and makes them feel more dynamic as a result. And by using more dynamic angles, say an upshot for example, you can inject more emotion into your footage. You'll notice that this is how television documentaries and even news broadcasts work. They'll switch to feeds from different cameras and even turn to face those cameras sometimes. You know, in other cases, different angles might come with different effects. You might want to switch to a portrait shot, for instance, that's filmed in black and white. Don't do this on a whim, though. Think about what it is you're trying to communicate by adding the effect or switching the angle. In this case, you might be trying to create more distance or class or nostalgia. Of course, in order to switch between angles, you'd usually use multiple cameras set up in different positions around the room. And this is a good strategy, but it does require a bigger investment and means you'll spend more time editing and uploading your footage. A much more budget approach is to use a single camera and simply change its positions between takes. Now, when you're on camera, 
remember to speak more slowly than you normally would. And this is particularly true because we tend to speed up when we're nervous. Make sure you enunciate and make sure that you're projecting your voice. And if you're unfortunate to be someone who doesn't have a particularly clear or professional sounding speaking voice, then you might consider hiring somebody who does. Alternatively, you could try slightly altering the pitch of your voice during post-production. Make sure as well that you're looking your best and wearing a tire that's suitable for your video production. That might sound like a no-brainer, but you'd be surprised at how many business owners think it's okay to record their video marketing in their old jumper. Pay attention to your hair as well. A little makeup can go a long way too, but ask someone who knows what they're doing. You know, nobody wants to buy from Ronald McDonald. Remember that if things go well, you're going to be seen by thousands of people, many of whom might become important clients. So imagine that you're going to a, a very important business meeting and dress accordingly. Once you have all your footage, the next step is to edit it into something cohesive and engaging. Editing can go a long way to making your video much more professional, even if the footage you've given yourself to work with is a little lacking. The most important thing to keep in mind with your editing is that you want to remove pauses, silences and ums and errs. Try to ensure that your video has flow so that there's no point where it feels like it's lingering or awkward or where it might lose your viewers attention. This is another reason you want to break long speeches down and then edit them together to remove the gaps. Generally speaking, the more you can cut away from your video, the better it's going to be. As we'll discuss in more detail later, shorter videos tend to be more effective from a marketing point of view. So the more information you can get across in a short amount of time, the more efficient your video is going to be at helping you to sell. Now, as I mentioned earlier, cutting out a pause in your speech can also be useful for comic timing and for adding to the flow of your video. While this is true enough, this kind of editing, you know, where you're almost cutting yourself off, tends to work better for less professional videos that are aimed at a younger audience. For business to business videos or adverts, you may want to use a different approach to your editing. The best way to get a feel for how to edit your videos is to watch how others do it. Normally, if a video has been well edited, you're not going to constantly notice what the camera is doing. So, watch a video you like, you know, one that's in a similar style to what you're going for, and pay close attention to how the angles are changing, where the speaker is being cut, and you know, how the transitions are being used. And you can even try drawing up a storyboard and then emulating this yourself. The editing process is also where you'll begin to add things like transitions and effects. This can go a long way to increasing the feel of professionalism, as long as you're using it well. Try to avoid gimmicky effects that distract from the content. Any effects you use should be subtle and, more importantly, consistent, so that they're hardly noticeable. At the very least, you want to add a fade-in and a fade-out effect at the beginning and end of the video, with the only exception to that rule being videos that have been purposely designed to look amateurish. To do all this, you're going to need a good piece of video editing software. Windows comes with Movie Maker, which is a free piece of software capable of very basic editing. And while this might be enough for your needs, you might be better off using something a bit more premium. Now, if you didn't get Windows Movie Maker installed as part of your Windows installation, you can actually download it from Microsoft if you do a search in Google for Windows Movie Maker, it'll take you to this page. Now if you want to try uh, a bit more professional software, you can have this one here, um, Adobe After Effects, which is good for creating visual effects, or Adobe Premiere, which is a professional editing piece of software. And this is a much more feature-rich piece of software, and it'll save you a lot of time when you're making your videos. Now, it's quite expensive, but it's worth it. And what's more, you can get your first month free as a trial through the Creative Cloud, so you can make your first few videos for free. From there on, it's a subscription-based service. 
With Creative Cloud you also get access to Photoshop and Illustrator, both of which can be useful for creating graphics for your videos, so it should provide good return on investment overall. Alternatively, you can use software on your computer, and a couple of good ones are Sony Vegas, which you can download from sonycreativesoftware.com forward slash Vegas software, and you can see we've got all the different uh, types of software here. Or you can use Serif Movie Plus, which you can download from serif.com forward slash movie plus and it's very reasonably priced um, 61 pounds and 27 pence is about forty dollars at the time that I'm making this video there is a free version of movie plus available as well if you click on the free downloads tab and come down here to movie plus starter edition uh, which does all the basic functions although some of the other more advanced features are limited Okay, so now you have a piece of well-edited footage featuring you speaking about your product or service or industry filmed on a high-quality camera in a professional-looking setting. Well, so far so good. But you might find that your video is still missing a few touches that make the most professional videos look really professional. And one of those is a video opener. This may not be necessary for a video that is an out-and-out -out advertisement, but if you have a YouTube channel with tutorials, instructions and other videos, then an opener can help you to build brand awareness and really add an extra level of professional quality. Of course, you can make your own opener and if you're confident with video editing software, this is a good strategy. You don't need to do anything too fancy. Simply creating a montage of your own footage with a logo over the top can do the trick as can a static splash page with a jingle. Better though is to pay someone to do it. And you can do this fairly easily using a service like Fiverr. Fiverr, which you can find at fiverr.com, is a website where users sell a range of services all for five dollars. And you might be surprised at the quality of work you can get here for that price. Pay someone on Fiverr to create a professional introduction for you and it will likely be far superior to anything you create yourself. Some users will also provide you with the option of getting the original file, which you can then edit yourself for further customization and flexibility. Likewise, you should also look into adding your logo onto the video itself. And you can do this in most good video editing softwares and simply adding your logo to the corners can go a long way towards making the video look more professional and further enhancing your brand awareness. And this also prevents anyone from stealing your footage and claiming it as their own. If you don't already have a good logo then this is something else that you should look into arranging immediately. Again you can get this cheaply from various sites 99designs, which you can find here at 99designs.co.uk, being a good choice. Another addition that may or may not be useful for your videos is to have screens with text. Now, these can be used to introduce the next scene in a video that's a list of points, for instance, to state questions to be answered in an interview, or to share extra information such as a link to your website or pricing. Finally, perhaps the most important extra touch is your music. Music can go a long way to increasing the professionalism of your videos and making your viewers more emotionally involved with what's happening. Again, this is something that's worth paying for, though you can get a lot of stock music from sites like Fiverr relatively cheaply. You should avoid the music provided by YouTube as it's used on so many videos it's become rather generic. Most importantly, do not use commercially recorded music like you might hear on the radio. You run the risk of being sued by the copyright owner. Now, you might think that Born to Run is the perfect soundtrack to your fitness video, but unless you happen to know Bruce Springsteen and have cleared it with him first, don't assume that he or his record company or their lawyers will be happy with the implied endorsement. 
You can pay someone on Fiverr or another service to make you an original composition and this will be far preferable. Make sure that when you add this music it doesn't drown out your voice and that you're careful to set the levels correctly. The best backing music should fade out slightly as and when you talk and rise in volume again during the silent parts. And make sure that it fits the tone and pace of your video. And what you should do is try a few different tracks to find the right one. With all these tips you'll find that it's perfectly possible to create a highly professional looking and sounding video on a budget, even if you wouldn't consider yourself to be a pro when it comes to video editing or presenting. Of course, if you do have more money to invest, then another option is to hire a professional to create your video or to design your video to avoid some of the challenges that are associated with the process. As we'll see, there are various different types of videos and not all of them will require you to go in front of the camera. And I'll talk about those in the next video.